Hello, it's Liz from West Star Tarot. And today I am going to do a video response to Kasha at Tarot Map. Uh, Kasha just recently did a um, video entitled Decks That Are Inspiring Me Right Now. And um, it got me to thinking about my tarot practice and um, my magical practice and how I had mm, gotten a little bit feeling blah or meh about things. Um, and then I went to a tarot conference, which I um, talked about in my uh, April favorites video. And my tarot practice and subsequently my magical practice was reinvigorated and um, joy was sparked and my heart was enlivened and um, I just was looking through a different set of eyes and um, through my heart. And so anyway, some decks helped me to get there. Um, and I thought I would talk about them. I have a few tarot and a few oracle. I have a few new ones and a few old ones. So it was kind of a um, mix of decks that re-enlivened and reinvigorated and um, reinstalled joy and passion and love for my um, tarot and um, magical practice. So, I'm gonna start out with the tarot and I'm gonna start out with the newer ones first. Both of these newish ones I have spoken about recently in, in other videos, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. But this deck, De Masse by Charlie Claire Burgess, has just, I, I, I don't know what to say, but uh, it, I have, n I have been trying to find a Marseille deck that I can use, that I can love for 10 years, I bet. And I just never found it until this, until now. This deck, the color palette of the um, pips and of the people cards, um, it just makes me so happy. And I, you know, I wasn't sure, oh, am I going to be able to, to read, um, the, the Tarot de Marseille deck? And honestly, from the first pull I put down, this deck just speaks to me and I can read it just as clearly and easily as any Rider Waite Smith deck I have. I am just adoring this deck. It is making me so happy. It is sparking joy. It is sparking creativity. It is re-enlivening my attraction to tarot and doing readings. Every day I'm getting up now and I'm like, ooh, I wonder what the game I say will have to say for guidance today. So that is um, The Gay Marseille by Charlie Claire Burgess. And then the other new one is this one called The um, Inner Awakening by Carol Herzer. And Carol hand makes decks and um, bags that she sends you the deck in. And I had used one of her decks at the tarot conference that I was at, The Starlight Illuminated with Glitter. And people were asking me, what is that deck? And so I um, emailed Carol and just told her that, you know, I was enjoying this deck and so many people were asking me about it and I was sending all these people to her website. And then she sent me a link to this deck. And I had been wanting uh, a second Carol Herzer deck. Actually, this is a third Carol Herzer deck, but I was just kind of, not able to see which one was the right one until I saw this one. And just like the Gay Marseille, I get up in the morning and I am excited. I look forward to pulling from this deck. And I'm 
the messages are so clear and the colors speak to me and enliven me and wake me up and make my heart happy. So um, this is The Inner Awakening by Carol Herzer. And I'm looking at, ah, oh yeah, look at that sky. The skies in this deck are incredible. Amazing, right? So that is um, another deck that is, new deck that is um, making me happy and re-enlivening uh, my tarot practice. And then I have a couple of older ones. Um, one of which, the next one I'm going to show you, anyone who watches my channel is going to say, oh yeah, not surprised to see this one. So it is the Guy in Tarot. This is the uh, Llewellyn version. And it is by uh, Joanna Powell Colbert. And, you know, I see myself in this deck. And I see my friends and my family in this deck. And I think that's one of the things that makes me um, enjoy this deck so much and makes me come home to it time and time again. I have had this deck for, I don't even know, at least 10 years, and it's uh, always in my top favorites. And um, I always return to it, um, and I'm doing so now. And it is making me really, oh. Well, this will have to go in my top Tarot Trump's favorite wheel card. So Masha at Musings by Masha is doing a tarot uh, tag called Top Tarot Trumps. It's going to take uh, the course of the year for us to go through our zero through uh, fool through world. And we pull out our top uh, favorites and I'm always pulling one from this deck um, not every time but many times so that is Guy and Tarot by um, Joanna Powell Colbert and um, again it just it makes me happy um, it reinvigorates me and it makes me um, look forward to my daily draws. Another older deck is this one, the Urban Tarot. And I saw someone, oh, Candy in Candy, Soul and Soil. She just got this deck and she was uh, showing the uh, her deck she's bought in 2024 or something. And this was, um, one of the decks that she um, showed. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love this deck. When is the last time I used this deck? And I love this Two of Cups, love, love, love. Um, and I realized I hadn't used it in so long and I, I pulled it out and it again, it's making me happy to um, read my cards every day. This card, um, let me just hold it up, is the Queen of Cups. And of course, this is a Thoth-based deck, so there's a keyword. And in the, um, sorry, this is by, um, oh shoot, Robin Scott. Sorry about that. Um, Robin talks, uh, you know, I have the guidebook. This is the indie version, not the mass market and the, um, Guidebook is separate from the deck in the box. But this, calling the Queen of Cups the therapist, completely opened a new way of looking at this card for me. And as someone, I am a social worker and I have done um, a lot of counseling in my jobs over the years. And um, I do consider myself um, to be uh, one of the things I relate to is the Queen of Cups, but I never thought of seeing the Queen of Cups as a therapist. And as I said, uh, again, this just opened things up for me when I, when I saw this, when I first got this deck. And there are uh, many cards in this deck. Okay, this one is without doubt my favorite um, Five of Wands ever. 
and I have spoken about this card on my channel many, many times. So I am from Boston and therefore am a Celtics fan and a Red Sox fan. And down the road a couple of hundred miles are New Yorkers and they are having their own teams, the Knicks and the Yankees and so forth. And there is always, <laughs> this is really sums up the relationship between Boston and New York sports fans. It just cracks me up. And it's, I think it's, if you know, you know, one of those things. Anyway, um, that has always been um, one of my favorite and I love this one. This is a beautiful expression of that card. Um, I just, I don't know, I just, I just love this. I love, love, love this deck. And I am glad that I rediscovered it from uh, Candy posting it. And again, this is um, reinvigorating, reawakening, stimulating, making me happy, um, all those kinds of things that um, I was, you know, I was kind of skipping days, um, especially I was away in March. And I noticed when I got home and looked at my journal that I only pulled cards about half the time that I was away. And even then I would pull one from a um, Oracle deck and that would sort of be my message for the day. So I had kind of, my interest uh, had, had, had waned a bit and now it is full on waxing. All right, so let me see. I'm going to talk about a couple of Oracle decks. So I have um, newish ones and an old one. So let me start with the New West and it is Oracle of the Hecatean Path. And I have spent um, the past year or so um, dedicating time and an altar and um, ritual to Hecate. Um, and I felt like I was only scratching the surface. So um, I came across this deck. Uh, someone mentioned it to me uh, that they thought I might be interested in it. And it's funny because the art style is not my typical art style, but oh my goodness. So there's three different types of cards in this deck. There's the different aspects or guises of Hecate. And then there's the different um, qualities of Hecate. And then there's, I think maybe 12 or 14 cards. I, are there any here? Um, that are, here, here we go. Um, that are um, Greek gods and goddesses that are related to or interact with um, Hecate. So there's three different types of cards and you could separate them out and do a pull from each one. I don't. I, I tend to just pull one a day because these cards are intense. This is not a huggy, warm, fuzzy deck, which is fine. I don't want, I don't want, uh, I don't want that. I want a mix of decks. You know, once in a while you feel like you need a hug. Other times you feel like you need Hecate. So this is a lovely deck. It's a little Scarabeo, so that says what it says about the guidebook. It does come in a nice two-part um, box, and it is by Ken Payne and Chris Butler. And if you have any interest in Hecate whatsoever, um, I really recommend that you check that out. Next up is The Rooted Woman. And this is by Sharon Blackie, um, the guidebook and the concept of the deck. And the art is by Hannah Willow. And Hannah, the, the reason I was uh, called to investigate this deck was because of the artist, not the author. Um, I have two other decks and multiple, I buy greeting cards from Hannah too. I love her artwork. So I got this deck when it came out as I said, because of the artist. And again, similar to the, um, similar to the, um, the Hecatean Path Oracle, um, this deck um, has sections. 
Um, so um, it has cards in different sections. So here we see Reclaiming the Feminine, Transformation, Miss, I'm reading this back backwards, so Selkie, more. So you can see there's goddesses. Here we see Sheila Nagig, and then there's places, the fall. It's just, it's just lovely. And um, there are softer cards, but I would not call this um, a warm and fuzzy deck by any means. Um, it's a little bit in your face but then there's a card like this so it's a mixture um and it is um, a celtic based deck this card is whoa um it the artwork is beautiful most of hannah's other artwork is um, more like the forest and little forest animals but this has a lot of goddesses and people as well as uh, forest scenes and animals. And I I just am loving this. Um, I just started up a new um, women's circle and we will be using this deck as part of our um, monthly meetings. Whoa, perfect way to end, huh? So that is the Rooted Woman. And then next up is one I got last summer called Anatomy of a Witch Oracle. This is by Laura Tempest uh, Zakroff. And um, she is local, somewhat local to me. Um, she went to um, the Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, Rhode Island, which is about an hour from me. And last summer, um, a group of folks um, had a festival in July called A Day of Witchery, and there were people there reading and um, selling um, all kinds of goods, um, foods, herbal products, um, decks, books, um, er everything, anything you can think of. And so Laura was there, uh, she goes by Tempest was there, and I had never, oops, I had never seen uh, this deck before. I do have her book, The uh, Sigil Witchery, which is wonderful, I love it. Um, and this is another deck that has cards in different sections. And I like it. The art style is somewhat simplistic um but the guidebook has um really good explanations and um i am what i've been doing is i've been using this deck and the rooted woman deck and sacred medicine and sometimes a couple other and i've just been pulling three cards uh oh look at that one one from each oracle or just one card from an oracle. So anyway, this has been really um, insightful and drawing, um, re-sparking, reinvigorating my tarot and my uh, magical practice. Um, and so uh, it's a Llewellyn deck. Um, here's the guidebook, it fits right inside the book. And um, there's a full color picture. And then there's, um, it tells you which group the card is from. So this is a cleanse and it's from the witch work group. And then there's a description of the card and then key words. So sanctify, purify, refresh, reclaim. And I feel like that's kind of exactly what this deck has helped me do for my um, divination and um um, magical practice. Um, so anyway, um, it ha then after uh, keywords, it, it gives you, you know, what you can do to enact that card. And then finally, last but not least is, a. let's see, I think, yes, I got this book, uh, sorry, this deck in 2017, the messenger cards. And like the guy in, this is a deck that I often will fall back on in times of troubles or challenges or when I 
really need, um, it's not necessarily a hug deck, but it can be really uplifting. And I, the artwork is beautiful. And as you can see here, there's um, cards that are just simply black and white um, outlines. And then there are uh, full color cards. And the guidebook is really good. Um, it, 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 you, you, you need to use the guidebook. At least I need to use the guidebook. Um, you can see the colors are beautiful. Um, one of my favorite cards in the deck. And yet sometimes we, um, we just see, well, not here, black and white. So um, these are the decks that have re-enlivened, reinvigorated, uplifted, and um, renewed my, um, my tarot and oracle, my divination practice, and my magical practice. And um, I, I'm so happy and I'm so back in love with uh, my cards. And as I said, I'm getting up every morning and I'm like, yay, it's time to go draw my cards. Um, and so that has just been such a gift. Um, and um, thank you, Kasha, for posting this uh, at the exact moment that I was feeling the same way, that um, I had kind of gone through a little bit of a waning um, period with my cards and my uh, magical practice. And now, um, interestingly, of course, um, the whole world around me is waking up. It's, it's spring and um, I'm feeling my juices flowing and I'm planting my garden and the beautiful plant spirits are coming back up to um, say, remember me, we're here, we were underground, but now we're back. So all in all, um, it's been an enlivening time for me um, in my practice and in my life in general. And I hope that you're experiencing the same thing. Peace and love to you all.